The story of Alice Tankerville and John Wolfe is one that isn't well known throughout the canon of English history, however it's a remarkable story that features robbery, treason, punishment, extreme torture and the brutal execution and death of three people at the Tower of London. The life of Alice Tankerville is a rather sad one and focuses on a woman trapped in a cycle of crime with her husband who is a petty thief and a thug. However, it's an incredible one considering she managed to convince a beef eater or yeoman warder guard at the tower to help her escape and she would become the first woman to ever escape the tower's walls. So join us today as we look at the remarkable story of Alice Tankerville and John Wolfe. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. In October 1531, a group of men sent by King Henry VIII and Parliament arrived at London docks expecting to collect a shipment of 366 gold crowns that had been sent from Europe to help replenish Henry's depleted royal treasury. The gold had a value today of probably around £1 million, however to the guards surprise, the heavy iron chest it was transported on, which was securely locked and chained to the floor of the ship and kept under constant guard, had vanished. A huge investigation was launched to bring the gold back and find the perpetrators of the crime, and after around two years, the finger pointed at a sailor, John Wolfe. Wolfe had a reputation for being a bit of a thug and a brute, and sometimes did indulge in pirate activities, but there wasn't much evidence to connect him to the theft. The only thing really was the fact that he'd been part of the crew on board when the ship laid anchor in London docks. This was enough, however, to issue a warrant for his arrest, and by early summer 1553, Wolfe had been sent to the Tower of London and awaited trial on charges of conspiracy, theft and treason, crimes which during the reign of Henry VIII would have pointed to a certain execution for John Wolfe. You simply couldn't steal from the king, let alone one of history's most brutal in Henry VIII. Whilst at the Tower, John's wife Alice Tankerville would visit him almost daily. She was a bit of a charmer and during her visit she would become friendly with two of her husband's jailers, beef eaters on yeoman warders, William Dennis and John Board. The two were stricken by Alice's charms and they allowed her to bring good food, wine and treats into the tower for her husband and they would also share these too. After six months of being imprisoned, Wolfe would be let free as the case against him collapsed for a lack of evidence and he really should have left the country and taken himself off for exile. Wolfe would smartly depart for Ireland for a break and he entrusted Beefy to John Board to look after his wife whilst he was gone, but Board was already falling in love with his once prisoner's wife. Whilst John was away, no evidence would link him to the king's missing gold and this also implicated Alice, his wife, as an accomplice. Wolfe had long gone, but to avoid losing any time, he and his wife were tried in absentia by Parliament even though Alice was still in London and was regularly seen around the Tower of London visiting guard John Board and during this time she wasn't made aware of any of the charges and developments in the case. Within days, the two, husband and wife, were tried and sentenced to death for treason, with their formal arrest warrants then being signed. In February 1534, Alice was seized and thrown into a windowless cell in the Cold Harbour Tower inside the Tower of London. The only light that filtered into her cell was through a tiny barred window in an extremely thick and heavy oak cell door. Her hands and feet would be kept shackled in heavy chains and secured to the wall and she was forced to wait for her husband John Wolfe to be captured. Alice's treatment was incredibly harsh and the lieutenant of the tower would intervene agreeing to remove the heavy irons as long as the cell door and outer door of the cold harbour tower was kept locked at all times. During her imprisonment, one of the guards tasked with keeping an eye on her cell was her old friend William Dennis. He was rather distressed about how she was being treated and he would bring her small gifts and visit her, however this would filter back to the lieutenant of the tower and Dennis was instantly fired. She still however had one key ally she could rely on, John Board, whose schedule had been changed to guard Alice's tower on a daily basis. Through the cell door the two would develop a relationship of sorts and when this would escalate into a romance and together the prisoner and jailer, the man tasked with keeping her inside the tower, would create a plan to escape. Alice had been informed of a possible escape route out of the Cold Harbour Tower and the tower's walls and Board would agree to help her, blindsided by love without a care for his own safety. Over the next few days, guard Board would buy some rope from a friend and would also obtain a copy of the key to Alice's cell and tower by making a duplicate and hiding it in his uniform. Through the bars in Alice's cell door, Board would pass a key, rope and a stick and she would hide them, 
They then finalised the plans for escape. Two weeks later it was a new moon, and the night in which John Board would help Alice Tankerville escape the Tower of London. At 10 o'clock, Alice's last guard left their duty, and she began to work breaking herself out of the tower. She would manage to lift the pin locking her inside the tower off its hinge, unlocking the door, and would make her way out of the cold harbour tower, and would walk through a number of narrow alleyways. On the stone stairs leading to a flat roof above Traitor's Gate, John Board was waiting on the roof of St Thomas's Tower. He tied the rope to an iron hook, and they waited until the night watch passed on their rounds of the streets opposite the moat. John being a yeoman warder was highly respected, and he would know intricately the schedules of the guards in and around the tower. Sliding down the rope after seizing the time, John and Alice would land quietly on a small wharf opposite Traitor's Gate. They untied a small boat, used to ferry prisoners into the tower, and silently crossed the moat. The couple had almost done it, they walked up a grass verge towards a nearby road, lined with the cottages that were lived in by the families and guards of the Tower of London. John had hired a couple of horses nearby, and they would head towards his friend's house to hide for a few days, following their escape. This would then give them enough time to escape London, and head to Europe. As Alice and John, who was probably still in his beefeater yeoman warder uniform at the time, made their way to the horses, they would have dreamt of starting their new lives with each other, beaming with excitement. However, as they rounded one of the last corners on their way up to Tower Hill where the horses were waiting, they were confronted by a group of men carrying lanterns, coming up the opposite direction. The two huddled closer, trying not to reveal their identities, but Bored would recognise them as the Night Watch. They were inspecting early this evening, and shouldn't be around this part of Tower Hill for another 10 minutes. One of the guards approaching Alice and John was an old friend of John's, Charles Gore, who instantly recognised him, calling out his name and waving. Board would quietly reply, and they pressed on, but Gore, however, was an occasional guard of Alice Tankerville's cell at the Tower of London, and he instantly recognised her. In a few seconds of panic, the guards seized John Board, who was one of their own, and Alice Tankerville, taking away their hopes of freedom and escape, and it was now clear what would happen to the two of them, and it would be absolutely horrific. Alice was hauled back to her cell, where a padlock was put on her door, and a 24-hour guard was also established. John Board, who was a guard at the tower, was taken for questioning, and without torture, he confessed absolutely everything, insisting that he was driven to betray his job as a guard inside the Tower of London, and also the King, because of his love and affection. At this time, word had reached the Lieutenant of the Tower that Alice's husband John Wolfe had been caught trying to return to England, and now all three of those involved in the initial theft and the subsequent escape would pay horrifically for their crimes. John Board was taken to a horrific cell known as Little Ease, a small cramped hole where a man couldn't stand up or lie down, and he had to spend days constantly in a fetal position, which would have been horrifically painful. Board was only allowed out of his cell to be tortured, not to make him confess as he'd already done this, but as part of his punishment. It would get a lot worse for ex-guard John Board though. Alice Tankerville and her husband John Wolfe on the 31st of March 1534 were taken from the tower and to the stone retaining walls that lined the River Thames embankment. Here they were secured in chains and lowered into the water at low tide. As the tide crept in and the water level rose, it was clear what would happen to Alice and John Wolfe. Inch by inch, the dirty water of the Thames crept up over their legs, over their waists and onto their chests, drowning the helpless and terrified couple as they couldn't hold their heads above the water much longer. This would have been a horrific death, and the realisation of this would have been for hours, playing on the minds of Wolf and Tankerville. For John Board's role in the escape of Alice, he would be shamed horrifically. He was an ex-guard, and the yeoman warders or beef eaters would be horrified of his role, breaking out prisoners. For his help in the plot to break out Alice, he was racked until his muscles ripped, and his arms and legs were pulled from their sockets, leaving him a broken man in excruciating pain, and he was unable to move on his own. His final humiliation would be much worse. John Board was thrown over the walls of the Tower of London, wrapped in chains, and was suspended there, slowly dying of exposure, dehydration, and his existing injuries caused by the rack. His body was left there to hang for months, and he was picked at by the crows and the ravens living inside the tower. It reminded passers-by of anyone foolish enough to cross the king and escape the king's justice. 
For all this horror, there has never been a historical record that documents that Henry VIII's gold crowns were ever recovered. For this, we still need to consider whether John Wolfe and Alice Tankerville were actually guilty of stealing from the King. If in fact they were innocent, the whole affair wasn't only extremely gruesome and horrific, but also would have been a huge miscarriage of justice. The stories of Alice Tankerville, John Wolfe and John Board are extremely interesting, and perfectly encapsulate the brutality and savagery of the Tower of London during the reign of King Henry VIII. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.